Hey guys, even here, and we have opposing footage of Kai Green at about half a year out of Mr. Olympia 2021. He's posing with Alex Cambronero, 2020 Arnold Classic winner in Classic Physique. Before we get to analyzing what Kai Green's physique looks like right now, I just gotta tell you that the difference between Classic Physique and bodybuilding is not this big. <laughs> Alex Cambronero is not at his best right now. Once again, Arnold Classic winner. If he was spot on at the Mr. Olympia 2020, he would have beaten Terence Ruffin again as he did at the Arnold Classic and he would have been a runner-up for the Mr. Olympia title. Well, that is at least my opinion. I do consider his physique to be more impressive, more complete, more of a classic physique than that of Terence Ruffin. He's not blocky at all like Terence is and he has just an amazing flow and that waistline, god, you gotta admire it. I mean, he has a waistline of a 12-year-old ballerine girl. So, when you see him looking like this, and this is his most recent story on Instagram, you know something is off, you know something is not right. So, I don't know what the hell this guy is doing right now, but he doesn't look very impressive for the off-season. I don't know when he's planning on competing again, but for the off-season... He is not as big as he used to be in the offseason. This is how big he can get in the offseason. If he was posing against Kai like this, it would be much, much less of a difference. But you can also see him looking like this in the offseason and then later winning Arnold Classic. I'm sure you didn't click on this video because of Alex Cambronera, so I'm gonna cut this short. I just wanted to make it clear to you that this is not his actual offseason size. And this is not a representation of bodybuilding versus classic. Classic physique guys are bigger. And Kai Green, he looks big right now. I mean, let's talk about Kai. He looks really good. I mean, he's huge. He has conditioning. He looks spot on. I mean, I wasn't expecting him to look this good at this point in time. You noticed I said that we are about half a year out of Mr. Olympia, but I said nothing about Kai Green coming back. And I'm not going to. I don't want the backlash. I'm just showing you how he looks right now because I stumbled upon this video. Uh, actually, a fan sent it to me on my Instagram, which is something you can guys do as well. Follow me, even bodybuilding, and tell me when you see something interesting you want me to mention in a video. So, Kai, right here, the waistline. The waistline looks much better. That's something I noticed. I'm not saying that his waistline shrink down. I'm not saying that he lost the bubble gut. I'm saying he learned how to control it. I mean, look at it. I mean, look at this, in a transition, he's controlling it, he's contro he worked on it, he realized it was an issue, and he worked on it. You can still see it though, I'm not acting blind, I mean, everybody can see it, and it is still a pretty big gut, it's still a pretty big stomach, it's still blown out, but it's more controllable than before. Before he would just let it hang, now he's controlling it way better. Other than that, he has the muscularity, I mean, he didn't lose anything, really. He doesn't look melted or anything like that. He looks like I would imagine him to look in the offseason back in 2016 when he was competing. Maybe he looks even more fresh right now. It's weird. I'm very impressed. I did not expect him to look this good. He looks great. I'm not saying he's gonna be coming back. He might be, though. I would love to see that. Everybody would love to see that. Let's not talk too much about it because we are already pissed off at Kai for teasing us so many times, but... Does he look great right now? Hell yeah, he does. And did he improve his stomach, his gut control, his midsection? Absolutely, absolutely, he did. He worked on that, which was a major issue. And if he can actually control it even a little bit better than this, it's gonna be hard to beat him. Any show, including Mr. Olympia. So I would really love to see him back on that stage. And he knows he's got it. I mean, look at him right now. I don't think he looked like this a year before, two years before. There were some photos that surfaced. He wasn't this good. He was this good. So he's working harder now. And he's working with Redcon one. So he's not in Hollywood making videos, making movies, actually. He is in bodybuilding community right now. So the chances of him actually coming back are rather big. And I know I said a moment ago I'm not gonna talk about the comeback, but I just got it. I'm a huge fan of Kai's physique, of his personality, not at all, I, I hate his personality, honestly. But as far as the physique, I love it. He's one impressive bodybuilder, one of the best of all time. In my book, fifth best bodybuilder of all time. You can argue about that, but that's just how I see it, considering the size, the conditioning, the, the presentation and everything. Physique-wise, my fifth best bodybuilder of all time. So, of course, I would love to see him back on the stage. And right now, he looks amazing. He looks conditioned for the offseason. He didn't lose a lot of mass or any. And he learned how to control his stomach, 
which is absolutely amazing. I applaud him for it. And I'm looking forward to actually seeing him on Mr. Olympia stage. Next, we have a photo of Blessing of Oribu. And no, this is not a recent photo. It is a, a throwback, let's say, but throwback only four weeks ago when he was eight weeks out of his first show. You can see his back and his legs and his lower body. I mean, and you can see that the glutes were pretty shredded for like eight weeks out. Wow, I mean, this is good conditioning. And as far as the back, it's getting conditioned and uh, it's a good shape. But compared to his lower body, his upper body is small, right? I mean, he, he has dominant lower body. Uh, his legs would be bigger, for sure, especially from the side poses, from the back and from the front. They're fine. Here, you don't really notice what I'm telling you about. He can pose in that way that make his legs look bigger because his lower body is just longer and, and, and bigger overall. So that kind of makes his upper body look smaller. But if you take a look at the back itself with covering his lower body, you can see that it's a good back. It's a good back. I mean, I mean sure, he can grow his lats a little bit more. He can definitely make that back thicker. But overall, I mean, it's, it's decent. It's good. I'm not saying it's New York Pro winning back, maybe, maybe, probably not, but it's a good back. For 8 weeks out, conditioning was in check, the glutes looked amazing. So how about we compare this photo of Blessing of Oribu against Nick Walker's back photo from 5.5 weeks out. The height ratio is probably off. Also, Nick is not wearing posing trunks, he's wearing shorts, so you cannot really see his glutes. You can see a part of his glutes, and uh, I don't know, I mean, it's it's different lighting, so you can't really judge. But if I had to do it, I would say that Blessing has a little bit sharper glutes at this point, even though Blessing is 8 weeks out of Indie Pro and Nick is 5.5 weeks out of New York Pro. But that's completely irrelevant, I'm sure Nick will bring great conditioning and I'm expecting him to be more shredded than Blessing because he already showed to us that he can be ripped to the, to the shreds and Blessing kind of didn't really do that. So at this point, conditioning not relevant. What we can focus on is muscular development. So if you talk about the back itself, I can see more muscle on Nick. Yeah, I think he has more density, especially to those lower lats. Uh, it's not the same lighting again, and the conditioning is different, so you cannot really judge again, you cannot really see even the muscularity so well, but if I had to, once again, this is just for fun, I would say Nick's back is a little bit more muscular, and as far as the lower body, Blessing's legs are longer, and that's why they can seem a little bit more stringy. Nick's legs are very short, so he can make them look thick, really thick, really easily, so, yeah, I, I would say that Nick has bigger, fuller, rounder legs, and also his hamstrings are bigger and more, more shredded, they're showing more detail, which is, again, a thing of conditioning, but I don't think anybody really has thicker hamstrings than Nick at this show that is coming up, and I'm gonna show you an update of Nick as well, I mean, he's known for his hamstrings. Anyways, right now, at this point, comparing these two back double biceps, I would say it's pretty close, but if I was a batting man, I would bat on Nick. He looks thicker, bigger, and I'm sure he's gonna be really conditioned when the show comes. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. His hamstrings. Look at his hamstrings. God, those are huge hamstrings. And the glutes as well. And they are getting really dry, really lean at this point. So this is his most recent update and he looks to be, to be getting shredded. We have two more photos of Nick, uh, two more updates that he posted about an hour ago. And you can see that he is getting dry. Right? I mean, look at the legs and the entire front part of his body. He's already pretty much in contest shape from the front. I'm sure his glutes and his lower back need a little bit more work, but from the front, he is ripped. And I can't imagine how ripped will he be once his back side is done. So he's gonna be even crazier from the front. And he's taking these photos from above, so I don't know why he's taking that angle. That makes his legs even shorter than they actually are. So, I don't think this, this, this angle is very flattering for him, but still, he looks amazing. This is most muscular, and here again, you can see it. He is really conditioned at this point, and he kept a lot of mass, and he gained. I'm sure he gained some mass from his past show. Uh, he has been working very hard, and that work is paying off. You can see that he's getting bigger, more dense, more round. Uh, the abs, look at the abs. I mean, who has this developed, these strong-looking abs? 
Though the waistline doesn't really seem super narrow, which is something of course blessing a lot of people noticed and he took the opportunity to troll Nick some more. <laughs> So he says, uh, let's see you pull a vacuum, <laughs> we'll actually make your waist look smaller, no joke, you should practice it. With all these crazy emojis where he's laughing, he, he's crying and laughing, which is basically saying, you can never pull a vacuum, there is no way, your waist is too big. He's trolling him, he's making him upset, and I, is he managing? I think he is, because this is Nick's response. If you think you're going to win with a vacuum, then this is more funny than I thought. And the previous comment was something about Blessing's legs, like show your legs from the front right now, and so on. So these guys went back and forth a little, and I don't know if this is actually getting to Nick, but uh, he, it seems like it is. I mean, Nick is a favorite, kind of, to win this show, and Blessing is an underdog, and Blessing can only gain more momentum with his drama. There is nothing bad that can happen to him, really, and Nick, who is a favorite... He doesn't need this. And Blessing is... I don't think he's actually his competition. <laughs> but we'll see what's gonna happen on the stage. Maybe he is. But at this point, I mean, Blessing, he never competed on a pro stage. Nick, however, did. And he proved it to us that he can actually be good as, as the top pros. So this drama between these two guys, I don't know how much sense does it really make. We'll see. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Blessing end up like fifth and Nick winning the show. It might be otherwise, but I think Nick's mass and condition that he knows how to bring will suffice and he will actually place higher than Blessing. That's just my opinion. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, so we have an update of an old school former Mr. Olympia champion Samir Banut, who is doing some biceps. And you gotta give it to him. For somebody who is 65 years old, his arms are looking absolutely amazing right now. He had a good set of arms back in the day, he was competing during the 80s and also during the 90s a little bit more when he made a comeback. I listened to a couple of interviews of his and he's saying that he hasn't really been using a lot of gear when he was competing. And I guess that's the reason why he was able to keep a lot of muscle at the age of 65. So once again, Samir Banut in 2021, his arms are looking great and he looks healthy, he looks happy. He's still able to train hard and you gotta admire that. If you were wondering what Brian Ainsley looks like right now in the offseason, well, even if you haven't been wondering, you will find out in this very moment, and this is him right now in the offseason. Honestly, I was hesitant. Should I make this, this part of the video? Should I mention Brian Ainsley? Because it's pretty much a dull topic. I mean, he looks always the same in the offseason, and when the show comes, he doesn't really improve much, even though he's talking about adding some details or whatever. I mean, last year, he wasn't much better than he was the year before, he lost Mr. Olympia title and Chris won. And this is him right now in the offseason. From what I can see right here, I think he should give up on Classic because, I mean, if he wants to be second forever or third, I mean, he was third actually last year, not second. If he wants to be in the top at the Classic Mr. Olympia, sure, I mean, yeah, that's great. But for being a Mr. Olympia winner, I don't think being second or third at the Mr. Olympia is gonna make him satisfied. So I think he should try a different venue, 212 sounds good, he looks great for 212 right now and I think he could do some real damage in 212 if he really wanted to and if he decided to push the things a little bit harder at this point and grow a little bit more and get a little bit more thick, you know, a little bit more dense for 212 because facing Sean Clarida and the others, it wouldn't be easy, but if he was able to beat George Peterson in Classic with Zeke before, I'm sure he can beat him again. And George was third last year, so think about that. I think he could do very well in 212. Whatever you guys think though, tell me down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be posting a lot of content in the future. Thank you so much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.